Pro Football Focus released a list of the most elusive running backs in the NFL. Did you see the list? I did not. Okay. So Devin Singletary is on the list. He is on it. You okay? Yeah. Oh, my God. Things dripping. Son of a biscuit. Good grief. Son of a bagel. Son of a bagel, he says. Ninth most elusive. Nine, nine, yeah, he was in the ninth most elusive back in the NFL. I want to know who the eight are. Yeah, the eight ahead of him? Yes. Yeah, there's a couple on the list. You're like, they're hammers. Oh, you're like, elusive. Like, what classifies elusive according to Pro Football Focus? Truthfully speaking, I did not dive into what makes their metric, only the fact that they have one. So let me find it real quick and uh, let's talk. Most elusive. What do you mean? Like, the <laughs> one's least likely to get a second contract in the same team. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he ran away from that one pretty quick. Titus Young was pretty elusive. He avoided the police for a couple days. 72 hours. Yeah. He was hiding in a boat. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, once again, as we talk about on the Sunday Drive, <laughs> as we talk about on the Sunday Drive, all of the uh, contributors to the uh, hashtag channel membership, we call them hashtag heroes. Oh, I like that. In. Hashtag heroes. We'll be scrolling along the bottom of the screen. Your uh, the the contributions that you make to the channel, as we have stated many times, fifty percent of the proceeds will be going to the Pawn Foundation for each channel membership that is is purchased. We cannot thank you enough. Pawn Foundation cannot thank you enough uh, for raising money for such a great cause. So we thank you as well. Uh, we're hoping to get more. Um, channel members coming in which you get exclusive content as far as behind the scenes um, additional content the breakdown the in, uh, outside the outside the hash inside the number series uh, which is going to be picking up as players meet and you know, practice starts to manifest so yeah. we cannot thank you guys enough for that so thank you what if you just typed in pro football focus and loose it back that's what I did type in oh. The fact that you can pick up your bagel and have enough butter dripping off of it for a whole nother bagel speaks to the level of focus of the people at Tim Hortons at uh, 7.30 on a, on a Friday. Well, they pick it up with a shovel and put it on. <laughs> the most elusive backs. Let me just make sure that this is the right list. It is the right list. Devin Singletary is number nine. You I'll reach, go, I'll let's reach go from you. eight to one. Let me read you what they said about Devin Singletary, okay? Just so that way you can understand exactly what made the rating, and maybe it'll give you some help as to figuring it out. Ready? Oh, okay. The Bills have an interesting situation. We were just talking about that on Behind the Scenes, how interesting is the word that you use when you're not entirely sure whether what you're hearing is a good you or bad know. thing. You don't know. Uh, the Bills have an interesting situation at the running back position next season. Rookie Zach Moss, who they drafted in the third round of the 2020 NFL Draft, was dubbed the most elusive running back in the 2020 Draft Guide. And that's Singletary's calling card as well. That's fascinating that they consider both of them to be elusive players. Now, we have said, we have said, we're guilty. Not as far as the elusiveness goes, but we have said, that you don't have to change the offensive philosophy with each of them. Uh, right. Yeah, Understood. no, agreed. Agreed, mm -hmm. right? So, but I think perhaps maybe when you hear the term elusive, you think of, like, Barry Sanders. That's elusive. That's the, that's the creme de la creme. Well, that's what I'm talking about. But perhaps their determination of elusive is just hard to tackle. Right? So by elusive, it's not necessarily – it's players who are breaking tackles. Perhaps that's their definition of elusive. Maybe we'll learn more. As they we should just through. call him feisty. <laughs> Across his final two seasons at FAU in 2017 and 2018, Singletary uh, trailed only David Montgomery in broken tackles on the ground with 179. As a rookie last season, he forced 42 missed tackles on 181 touches, once again making him one of the most elusive back among, among his peers. The question becomes whether it is enough to hold off Moss as the season progresses. So that's really what they what they're referring to. Okay. It is missed tackles. That's what's determining 
a loose end. So basically what they're saying is <laughs> that's like using a completion percentage to determine solely to determine accuracy. That's what literally everybody does, though. <laughs> they look at completion percentage and go, nope, not accurate. Not an accurate quarterback. Nope, can't complete a pass. But you, can the comments, you can go to the comments of literally any video we posted this last week about the Jets, Miami, and the Patriots. There's at least one Josh Allen is trash comment on every single one of them. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. You got a voice. You use it. I don't care. We sure. don't care. No. Nope. But. Come on, come on. I'm wondering if there is an adjusted elusiveness metric that said, nah, he would have gotten tackled. <laughs> Well, I think it's I think it's fascinating how you can combine. Uh, it's like elusive. I'm playing a drinking game with you. Yeah, right. Every time you say fascinating, I got to drink. Uh, how they're combining elusive, which typically you do correlate with missed tackles, with forced missed tackles. I don't think forced missed tackles are a category. No, no, it's like to me, for like you just said, forced missed tackles and actually making somebody miss. It's like that little shuffle pass the quarterback does in shotgun. Yeah. And he just tosses it forward. They yeah. call that a pass. Right. I don't – no. You can't tell me that the elusiveness that Marshawn Lynch had was the same as elusiveness as Barry Sanders. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. I'm not buying it. Nope. All right. Well, let's go through this list. I think it's very I – th I think it's very enlightening what they categorize as elusive. So give me one of the eight players ahead of Devin Singletary as most elusive. Jerome Bettis. Not all time. <laughs> According to this He's list, so the bus are driving the most. Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott, not on the list. Serious. Wait a minute. All right, episode's over. I'm turning. Yeah. <laughs> Elliott is. Uh... Oh man, we're really down the list here. Uh, passing twenty. Does Twenty-two. It... Does it count as a break, ta break broken tackle if they can't catch you? <laughs> I don't know. Like, he just runs away from people. Yeah, no. I can't get it. Who's eight? You want a hint? No. No? You want number eight? Okay. Number eight is Chris Carson from uh, Seattle. I'm a big Carson fan, so... You I can't, get you it. Can't, you can't be in the I know. I, it's, I get it. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I like Chris Carson an awful lot, so that one makes sense. Uh, to me. Number seven? What? You got, you got to chill on it. I know you're on a time limit right now. But it's so good, though. Um, number seven. Who we got? Saquon Barkley. That's seven. It's seven. 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 Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. I know McCaffrey's going to be. Well, let's go through the list and find out where he is. Number I agree, six. I agree that we can't, I agree that Barkley's elusive, more elusive yeah. than Simmons. No, six is somebody that I would have figured would have been in the top three, and that's Austin Eckler. Eckler is really dangerous. He is. Like, really He's dangerous. sneaky dangerous. Like, people don't realize how sneaky he was. People forget how good he is. Yeah, it was. that's why Gordon was expendable. Right. Among yeah. other reasons, but that's that's one. Right. Yeah. I mean, workload's always been the thing with Eckler. Is you worry about giving him too much work and and that elusiveness, yeah. that that speed that that he has, that quick twitch that he has, kind of dying out over the course of the season. Workload's definitely an issue. But if I were if I were the Chargers, I would like to go too. Well, yeah, but to but a to a similar degree, that's like when you, you when you try to sign a wide receiver two, right. And make them a wide receiver one. Sometimes they can't do that. Well, and here's here's something fascinating, right? I wouldn't classify Singletary as a receiving back, nor would I classify Carson as a receiving back. Although Carson is a is a decent receiver, I'd probably put him and him and Singletary in the same page as not necessarily receiving backs, but they can they can do it if they, they can need do it, to, yeah. if you need them to. But then you look at Barkley and Eckler receiving back, receiving back. So those guys probably get the ball in a little bit more space. Than to be Carson and Singletary. Yes. All right. Yeah. So touch has got to be in it too. Right. Saying. Number five, Dalvin Cook, who might not even show up to play this season without a new contract. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook is number like five. Like Cook. Oh, more elusive than Saquon Barkley, though. Uh well, okay. Here's what they had to say about that. He forced 91 missed tackles on the ground in 2016 for Florida State. I don't know why that matters. The why college matters. 
Uh, but it says here uh, that success is carried over in the NFL, stretching back to 2017. His missed tackles forced per touch mark at .22, ranks third among active uh, players with at least 200 touches. So he's third among players with at least 200 touches. But he's fifth on the list. Okay. I'm already not liking this list. I struggle with PFF a little bit. I'm not going to say that I don't. I really think that they're running out of things to talk about. Mm, yeah. Because this creates stir. This is a stir. Um, yeah. yeah, this creates a stir. But uh, Devin Singletary being 9 probably creates more of a stir for players at 10, 11, and 12 than it does for people in Buffalo going on. I wonder who's ahead. You know? No, no. Because he has pro- – I mean, he had – he had a heck of a rookie season, sure did. and he he, sure did. he was not easy to bring down. Nope, sure wasn't. And all. then they then they got 2.0 in the draft. You know, like Zach Moss and Devin Singletary really do have a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. Uh, number four is the player I thought was going to be number one. Christian McCaffrey. Kamara. Alvin Kam- Kamara's four. 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 Okay. 140, or 157 broken tackles since 2017. How do you put anybody ahead of Kamara? Either? Four. Yep. I don't get. I don't get that. I don't. I don't. I I don't. Do I think? Oh man, this is weird because I would put him and Barkley very close to each other. Yeah, I agree. Not, but Nick close to the top, like two or three maybe. Right. Yeah. I guess this just adds a list of things that scare me about PFF a little bit. Like who are they employing? Well, number three will fix that. Number three is, give me a guess. Come on. McCaffrey. No, nope. you got to stop saying McCaffrey. I'm going to say McCaffrey until he's on there. Okay, all right. Derrick Henry is number third. Number three. 136 total missed tackles forced uh, on the ground are 13 more than any other running back over that time since then why 2017. Isn't he won? Since 2017. Well, then why isn't he one? Well, because apparently things that happened in college and – Back in 2017, matter? mattered in this list. I don't know. So I don't know. Henry I don't know. is I, I mean, Henry can pull away from anybody. Don't I, get me wrong. He can pull away from anybody. But I jump in front of a car before I want to tackle Henry. That's the thing, right? Like he does. He does have a pull away gear. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's something Singletary and Moss don't have. They mm-hmm. don't have that next level gear gotcha. to get him down the field. Yep. But in in short space, they're two very different runners. Singletary slash Moss versus Henry. Yes. I mean, good God. No, you're talking yeah, you're talking apples and oranges. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah. All right. Number two. Josh Jacobs. Get out. I didn't make the list, man. I don't know how you rank Jacobs ahead of Singletary. Like that far ahead of Singletary. Ahead of Henry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it says here this uh, missed tackles forced per touch was 3.0, which would have been better than Henry, which is 0.22. Um, oh, God. Whatever. Um, J- Jacobs coupled that with 3.5 yards uh, after contact per rush and 9.6 yards after uh, the catch per reception and limited usage out of the back. In 2014, while he was in high school, Jacobs did <laughs> Talk about yards after contact all you want. The Raiders line is pitiful. Of course there was lots of yards after contact. Yes. He was getting hit in the backfield the whole time. All right, number one. Top elusiveness grade. What's your guess? Come on, give me your guess. Number one. Number one? Yep. You've been saying it forever. What's um, number? Who's number one? Clyde Edwards Hilaire. <laughs> Because in 2010 in gym class, he stiff-armed a fourth grader to he's the crown. He's undefeated in dodgeball. <laughs> okay, uh, give so me your number Christian one. So McCaffrey's number one most elusive back. Nick Chubb is the number one most elusive back. Stop I'm it. Not, I'm not kidding. Nick Chubb Nick is number Chubb? one. Number one. Yep, number one. So Christian McCaffrey is... We scroll a little bit here. 13. I'm glad PFF is consistent. I know, right? Consistently it, awful. It just doesn't make sense. Middle of the road missed tackle numbers per touch. Now, that, but that's the thing. They're they're really basing a lot of this on missed tackles per touch. But McCaffrey was their offense last year, so that's not really a fair 
margin to use if missed forced misses per touch is the thing because McCaffrey touched the ball like 400 times last season. He did. So, of course, his missed his forced missed tackles per touch is going to be low. He he literally carried the team the whole season. So, what? Why? Why? That would be. That that I is looking into the numbers too deeply. That is that, that, that is that is looking into the numbers too deeply. That's like saying that Dak Prescott is a top three quarterback because he threw for almost five thousand yards last year. Well, going to the history books, Jameis Winston is one of the best quarterbacks ever to play the game. That is a direct quote from Winston, though. <laughs> from Jameis Winston. I mean, yes, I, I can yes. say yes. I'm yes. the greatest yes. driver of all time. <laughs> This doesn't make it true, and you know this isn't true. No. <laughs> I, I guess the interesting thing here to me is that they are comparing Singletary among the best backs in the NFL, even with a really small sample size. So that's I think that's great. That's cool that the, the right attention is being paid to Buffalo. Now, the question is, you know, truthfully about that list, it sounds like they give a lot of credence to young players who didn't, yeah. you know, like yeah. – they reach back into the college depths to get some of their stats, and I, I don't really love that. But no. it sounds like they are, you know, looking at Devin Singletary as a really dangerous player in this league, and it's nice to hear that about a player for the Bills not named Josh Allen, because that's all we've really heard about is this team is going to go as Josh Allen goes, and and I think there's a case <clears> to be made for that. But the truth is, it's nice to be talking about a player not named Josh Allen in a, in a positive way. It really yeah. is. In a, in a metric provided by PFF, Devin yep. Singletary is technically a top 10 back. Yep, right. That's what I took from that. Yep, back. I'll take that. Even though it was atrocious. Well, I'll take that considering they also drafted his replacement in the, in the third round this year. <laughs> That's like rating Ryan Tannehill as a top 10 quarterback. You're just like, hey, it's... Let's see how long this lasts. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done.